In terms of the treaty that they're all talking about, it is impossible to negotiate a treaty between Australia and the state of New South Wales, uh, or any other state for that matter, simply because our problem and our issues are with the Crown of England. You see, Australia, for all of you high school students and people, Australia still rules and governs in right of the English Crown. Australia has been given the right to do its own thing and be self-determining after 1986 and to make their own laws. But you see, those laws are now frustrated. The making of those laws are frustrated after na the Native Title Act and after Mabo. Because you see, now Australian common law and the English common law recognises Aboriginal law and culture. That means that we have in this country two laws. That's why we fly two flags. Because there are two flags that fly and those flags recognise the common law rights of Aboriginal people under our law and custom. The other thing that's important to understand as well is that the legislature, the parliaments of Australia, do not have a legal right to change any Aboriginal law, none whatsoever. The parliaments of Australia can change the laws in relation to Western society and the laws and how you govern, but they cannot in any way, shape or form pass any laws that takes away Aboriginal rights under our law and custom. Because those rights belong to Aboriginal people and Aboriginal people only. And we make those laws according to our customs and laws. And so when we talk about uh, voice to parliament, truth and a treaty, we really truly need to understand what it is that we're, we're being asked to do. It's a big job, it's a big task, it's not a simple task. And unfortunately, we have to engage um, politicians who are, who are funded and paid for by corporates and other interests around this country. You elect them, but the campaigns are run by um, others uh, that you don't see. And for you as high school students, you are the guys who within the next five years will have responsibility for voting people into parliament and to taking on the responsibilities that we have now. And I think that it's great to see events like this year because the coming together of people on a more regular basis like this year really helps to create a, a better understanding and going forward um, in, in truth and honesty. And I think that's one of the great benefits of, of things like NAIDOC Week and you know, having the participation of the Mayor and um, others around here um, to help celebrate uh, these events certainly takes us forward. Uh, and progressively. Quite frankly, Aboriginal people's rights and the things that we're doing around this country right now, a lot of people are in for a rude shock about the power that we have. And you see, there is this thing here, that flag, the one in the middle, and that flag. In the United States right now, there are business people who really don't want to invest money in this country. And there's one reason why they don't want to invest money in this country for development and business is because they don't know whose law is the number one law in this country. Because those flags fly on parliament houses, they fly in front of courts, and they fly in front of schools. And what does those flags mean? Those flags mean power. That's what they represent, power. And so it's illegal. If you don't recognise the authority and the power, sovereignty, of other people, it's illegal to fly those two flags. You can go to jail. Anywhere in the world, it's called sedition. If you put up another flag next to your nation's flag, you can go to jail. And for treason and sedition, that's the only crime around the world where you can get shot for it. When you, commit a, when you commit that offence. So, what you have here when you fly those two flags is you must, non-Aboriginal Australia has to accept the fact that Aboriginal people in this land have a law that comes from our dreaming, come from our culture, our customs. And, in, and the highest court in this country said that that is a construct not of England, 
and the common law, but it comes from our own Aboriginal culture, which is the law of this land. And so we got to, so the problem that you've got now, for you as young ones, need to get to ask some questions with your teachers about what does that really mean? And if that, so if it means that we've got two laws sitting in this country, then whose law is superior? Wait a minute, a big problem. The highest court in this country yeah, said that when, there's, when you make a decision about those two laws, whose law is dominant over the other, there is no court, not one court in this country, who is permitted to make that decision. And so we have a clash of two laws and nobody at this point in time knows how to deal with that. And I keep telling my people, when they're pushing the treaty on you, yeah, they're cheating you. They're trying to cheat you because they want you to sign up and give all your power away through a treaty. And unfortunately, when the states like Victoria are trying to treat you with Aboriginal people, they are telling a blatant lie. Again, it's a lie, and Australia is built on lies. And so what you've got, the only people in this country who can negotiate a treaty with Aboriginal people is the Governor-General of Australia, who represents the Crown of England. Because you see, every parliament, every law made in this country, in Canberra and in Sydney, they are made in right of the English Crown. Yeah? Look at all the laws, every law in this state. Go back, part of your history, part of your just learning. Have a look at the laws that govern education. If you ever look at those laws, it says that we rule in right of the Crown. Yeah? And when you look at that, you will realise that there is a very big problem in this country. And so I think, you know, one of the great things about this exhibition yeah, is that you have, I think, your student population is pretty, uh, pretty high here in terms of the ratio between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. And I think it's a good school, and I think what, what you have here is excellent. I, con I congratulate the school for putting this together because you guys have got something here going, and I'm trying to now... I can see the benefit of this, and I'm trying to recommend these young ones who put it together and the parents to put this together professionally and tour this exhibition around Australia. This is an exhibition that come from, can come from Ballina and it can start what we call the national conversation.